Welcome back to Hatman Strikes Back Daily Boxing News. I am Hatman, of course, and in today's video, I'll be giving you the most comprehensive breakdown of Anthony Joshua versus Daniel Dubois that you'll find anywhere on YouTube. But before we get into it, do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Sorry, wrong gif. Do me a favor, please, and smash that like button like your life depended on it. Smash it, smash it, smash it. All right, let's do this. Starting first with Anthony Joshua's strengths. Number one, counterpunching. Anthony Joshua has been arguably the most underrated counterpuncher in the heavyweight division for the past decade. He likes to set traps, and when he springs them, opponents find themselves in trouble more often than not. His counters are typically fast, powerful, and accurate. Number two, balance. Very rarely do you see Anthony Joshua fall off balance either when he's moving around the ring, making an offensive move, a defensive move, or even when he misses a shot. He controls the distribution of his body weight across his stance very efficiently and very quickly. This is one of the reasons that he's such a dangerous counterpuncher. He's able to set himself and fire hard shots from either hand in the blink of an eye. Number three, accuracy. Anthony Joshua is not only quite accurate for a big man, but he's also a very correct puncher. He's not one of these guys who lands a lot of clubbing, cuffing shots with the inside of the glove or the corner of the glove. AJ tends to connect flush with the knuckle part of the glove more often than a lot of other big men. Number four, punching power. AJ's always had knockout power in both hands, but if Ben Davison has done anything to improve AJ's game, it's been to tweak his punch mechanics to allow him to generate more power than ever before. Number five, hand speed. Anthony Joshua has surprisingly quick hands for a man of his size and build. Comparisons to Frank Bruno are completely invalid. AJ is much faster and more athletic than Frank Bruno ever was. And to my eye, he has a noticeable hand speed advantage over Daniel Dubois as well. Number six, punch variety and versatility. AJ has got every punch in the book. He's got knockout power in his straight shots, his hooks, and his uppercuts with both hands. This means that he's a lot more difficult to nullify than someone like Deontay Wilder, for example, who only has a straight right hand. Also, contrary to what some have claimed over the years, AJ is actually a solid all-round boxer. He's not just a slugger. He can also fight on the back foot when need be. He can fight at long range, or he can shorten his shots and engage at close quarters as well. Number seven, combination punching. From very early on in his career, Joshua showed an aptitude for putting multiple power shots together in rapid succession. However, since his loss to Andy Ruiz, AJ has been reluctant to unleash his explosive five and six punch combinations of old. Nowadays, it's one or two punches at a time, three at a push. I don't think it's purely down to fear of getting caught again. I also think it's a fear of gassing out as well. AJ is more mindful of pacing himself now, but he still has that rapid fire mode in his arsenal and it allows him to inflict a lot of damage in a very short space of time. And number eight, ring IQ. For my money, Anthony Joshua is a smarter fighter than Daniel Dubois. He's less offensively impulsive. He's more strategic. He likes to think several moves ahead. And I think that will be important in nullifying Dubois superior energy and aggression. Now we move on to weaknesses. Number one, average chin. If AJ had a glass jaw, as some have suggested, he'd never have gotten up from that right hand against Vladimir Klitschko. He'd have been out cold. But if he had an iron jaw like Marius Wack used to, for example, then he wouldn't have gone down in the first place. So I'd say AJ's chin sits right in the middle of those two extremes. He doesn't have a bad chin, but he doesn't have a good chin either. He's got an average chin. Now, if he was a welterweight, it might not matter too much. But at heavyweight, the punching power is so outlandish that having anything less than a good chin can only be seen as a weakness. Number two, average stamina. Again, Joshua doesn't have the worst gas tank I've ever seen on a heavyweight, but it's nowhere near the best either. And what people need to appreciate is that a lot of it is down to genetics. AJ trains extremely hard. He's a consummate pro, but he's over 250 pounds of mostly muscle. He's just not built to maintain a high punch output for 12 rounds. His physiology won't allow for it. And AJ has figured that out himself now, which is why he tends to have a fairly low punch output. But that's something that Dubois could potentially exploit. AJ is tall, he has long arms, he's quick, he hits hard, and he's a good counterpuncher. 
These attributes allow him to get away with a relatively low punch output against most opponents. But it's contingent on his opponent not having the defense and or the heart and toughness to withstand his offense. If Daniel Dubois can avoid or take AJ shots in the first half of the fight without being too damaged or discouraged by them, then he has a chance of overwhelming AJ late in the fight in a similar fashion to what he did against Filip Hergovic. Number three, poor survival instincts. When Joshua was hurt against Dylan White, against Klitschko, and especially against Andy Ruiz, he did not show good survival instincts at all. He was pretty much a sitting duck. What you're looking for is a fighter who stays calm, selects the most appropriate defensive action for that particular opponent in that particular scenario, and then takes it decisively. If you take the wrong action, or you're not decisive enough in the action you do take, then you're gonna find yourself getting caught with a lot of follow-up shots. If your opponent is shorter than you and he has slow feet like Andy Ruiz, then get on your bike. Move, move, move. Even if you have to literally run around the ring, don't even think about throwing any punches back. Just get out of there until you get your senses back. If your legs are too wobbly to do that or you're fighting a tall guy or someone with quick feet, then grab hold. Clinch your opponent and be rough about it. Push his head down. Grab his arms with all your strength and lean into him so he loses balance. And don't let go until the ref has to warn you. If he gets his arms free and traps you on the ropes, try to roll with the shots. Move your head, slip and slide. Learning these survival skills is absolutely crucial at top level. Whether or not AJ has improved in this regard remains to be seen. Number four, overthinking. Being a thinking fighter is a good thing. And AJ is a thinking fighter. But being an overthinker is a bad thing because it causes you to hesitate, to second guess yourself, to be indecisive. And the result of that is that you miss opportunities to land punches. And in a sport like boxing, that can come back to bite you on the rear end. If you fail to pull the trigger in the early rounds against a young, energetic heavyweight like Daniel Dubois, you might be regretting that late in the fight when you're tired and he's throwing the kitchen sink at you. Now, AJ certainly shouldn't be reckless against Dubois, but he should be decisive as he was against Otto Wallen and Francis Ngannou. He'll need the same mentality against Daniel Dubois. Be clever, but when you throw your shots, do so with mean intentions. Number five, questionable desire. AJ has talked about retiring from boxing in the not too distant future. He's also spoken about purely being in it for the money at this stage, rather than the love of fighting or to enhance his legacy. Now, fighters, of course, can say these things impulsively and feel the complete opposite way the very next week. But if AJ really means this stuff deep down, then how much determination will a guy like that have to come through a crisis? I'm not saying he won't show the requisite desire. I'm saying it's an open question. Moving on to Daniel Dubois. First of all, his strengths. Number one his jab. Daniel Dubois might have the most powerful jab in the heavyweight division. It's certainly up there. In fact, I think it's powerful enough to actually hurt Anthony Joshua if he lands it right. Number two, aggression. In his last fight against Filip Hergovic, Dubois did not allow Hergovic to settle. He was on him for three minutes of every round, which forced Hergovic to throw a lot of punches and expend a lot of energy trying to keep Dubois off. It caused him to get tired, at which point Dubois was able to start landing more frequently and take control of the fight. Number three, fearlessness. Fortune favors the bold. You gotta be in it to win it. Dubois is willing to take risks. He's willing to roll the dice. He's willing to gamble in order to land his shots, in order to hit the jackpot. And that makes him dangerous. Number four, punching power. Dubois is a good puncher with both hands. Probably not among the top five punches in the division, but I think he hits plenty hard enough to hurt and stop Anthony Joshua if he lands clean enough. Number five, high work rate and good stamina. Daniel Dubois is 26 years old, and he fights like a 26-year-old man. He has a lot of energy, he throws a lot of punches, and he can carry it on for the whole fight. We saw that against Jarrell Miller. He'd thrown a lot of shots all the way through that fight, but he still had the energy to up the work rate in the 10th round and get the stoppage. Number six, recent opposition. Steel sharpened steel. Daniel Dubois has fought tougher opponents in his last couple fights than AJ has. So he's battle hardened right now. He just came through two firefights, so he's ready for a tough battle. AJ, on the other hand, had a couple of blowouts. So we don't know how he's gonna react at his age when he's in a tough fight again. Moving on to weaknesses. Number one, poor defense. 
Daniel Dubois' guard is holier than the Bible, Swiss cheese, and old socks. You could drive an articulated lorry through that guard. Not only can you get to his head, you can also get to his body because his elbows are always flared out. He doesn't tuck them in like you're supposed to. He has very little head movement, and when he does move his head to roll underneath a shot, he often leaves himself off balance. So if his opponent just keeps on punching, they can catch him straight after that roll. Hergovic did this countless times. And because Dubois' head movement is so poor, he'll often rely on his legs for defense instead. And when you're a come forward fighter, going up against a taller opponent like AJ, that's a problem because by moving away, you're giving him the time and space he needs. Against Joshua, you wanna have the ability to hold your ground, slip and counter, just like Andy Ruiz. But Daniel Dubois is not that guy. Number two, minimal counters. There's a saying in boxing, make him miss and make him pay. Well, Daniel Dubois is not particularly adept at that. He's almost exclusively a lead puncher. He tries to bully and overwhelm you, and that's fine, but it makes his attacks somewhat predictable and easy to anticipate. He doesn't set many traps. His game isn't particularly sophisticated. And in boxing, it's the punches that you don't see which hurt you the most. And Dubois doesn't tend to land that many sneaky shots. Number three, telegraphing his punches. Dubois doesn't have the classic boxing technique that AJ does, where he's nice and side on, his elbows are tucked in. No, Dubois is often more square on than that and his elbows are flared out. Not only does that make you easier to hit, it also makes his punches easier to anticipate. You can see the motion in his arms and in his shoulders when he's cocking back to throw a shot. Rather than throwing a straight right hand, he'll often loop it over the top. And don't get me wrong, there may be times when a looping punch is the right shot to get around an opponent's guard, but when it's always a looping shot, it becomes very predictable and easy to time, and it leaves him vulnerable down the middle to straight shots and uppercuts. Number four, inaccuracy. Dubois is not the most clean or accurate puncher in the world. Don't get me wrong, his accuracy is not terrible by any means. It's just not as good as AJ's. Dubois' punches are often clubbing and cuffing rather than clean and crisp. And he's been known to miss very wildly on occasions, which is a very dangerous thing to do against a tall puncher like Anthony Joshua. And finally, number five, mentally erratic. Daniel Dubois quit against Joe Joyce and Alexander Usyk. He redeemed himself against Jarrell Miller and Filip Hergovic, but he found Joyce and Usyk far more difficult to hit than Miller and Hergovic. He was on the end of a jab against the first two and he struggled to get past it. Was the heart he showed against Miller and Hergovic down to the fact that he was always able to land on them, which therefore kept his spirits high? What happens if AJ managed to pin him on the end of a jab for several rounds? Will Dubois implode again? It's an open question. AJ was unable to land on Usyk for long stretches as well, but he didn't crumble mentally, at least not to the extent that Dubois did. He was able to go the distance twice. So there you have it. Anthony Joshua versus Daniel Dubois, strengths and weaknesses. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button like it's a bad bitch. And don't forget to subscribe. Also click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. If you want to see me break down some actual fight footage of Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois, where I analyze actual video of their fights in real time, pointing out their strengths and weaknesses and what have you, then check out the film study I uploaded on Patreon. It's over an hour long. If you want to access this video, along with hundreds of hours worth of other exclusive boxing content, as well as our members chat, just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called The Boxing Brotherhood. There's no contract, no commitment. You can cancel at any time, just like Netflix, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Just download the app from the Play Store or the App Store. All the links are in the description box below.